Hello and welcome back to the OSM channel. So a moment ago I was trying to capture the sound that this 2014 GMC Terrain 2.4 liter Ecotec has been making on really cold mornings. So what happens on a cold morning? I get this rattling sound coming from the area where the timing chain is and that rattle will last anywhere from 5 to 30 seconds until the engine's kind of warmed up and then it kind of goes away. So I have a strong suspicion that we have an issue with the timing chain. Now I'm not getting any engine codes and the sound isn't constant, right? It's only on cold mornings. So I highly suspect that we either have a stretched out timing chain, we have an issue with the timing chain guides, or perhaps the tensioner is starting to fail. All right, I wanna make a quick update to the introduction of this video. Now, initially I was gonna show you just how to replace the timing chain and guides and tensioner. However, as I dug deeper into this engine, there were a few other problems. The balance shaft chain was shot, so I'm gonna show you how to replace the balance shaft chain, guides, and tensioner. And then also, the spark plugs were shot, so I bought some new spark plugs. And then also, when we go to reassemble the engine, these are the bolts for the intake and exhaust camshaft sprockets. These are torque yield bolts, these are aftermarket bolts but we're also gonna need those as well. So if you're looking for a complete list of parts and materials, like what, pretty much what you see in front of you, I will leave links to everything down in the description below. Now, I, I know how the old saying goes, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but on this specific engine, if you don't fix it, it will break you. So in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to replace the timing chain on a GMC Terrain. So I am going to be completing this job with the engine in. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do is jack up the passenger side of the car, remove the passenger side tire, we'll put a jack stand under the car, and then drain the engine oil. The front of the car jacked up and supported with jack stands. We need to remove this plastic access panel, and you're going to remove three plastic pop rivets, one here, one here, and one here. I did that with this body clip removal tool. Let's take this panel out of the way. Now we need to start removing some components on the top side of the engine. So the first thing to go is the air box. So we need to remove this PCV hose, just wiggle this and it should pop out like so. We need to remove this hose clamp right here, which you can do that with an eight millimeter socket, counterclockwise. Now, this is the front of the intake. If you follow that down to your throttle body, there will be another eight millimeter fastener holding that hose clamp on. The same thing, loosen up that hose clamp. Now you should be able to take the front of the air box and wiggle and lift up. You have to get a little bit forceful and then to get the back out, just pull it to the side a little bit, back to the other side, like so. There's like two little rubber plugs. You just gotta pull that out of the, uh, the socket there. You wanna make sure we protect the throttle body Take a rubber glove or something, stretch it over it so no debris fall on the throttle body. We also need to pop this plastic cover off, so remove the oil cap. Then, same thing, this is going to have those rubber uh, plug, plug and socket type joints, so I'm just going to need to lift up, wiggle it, you got to get a little forceful, lift up in the back. Should eventually pop like so. Pull that out of the way and reinstall the oil cap. Now before we remove the valve cover, let's get this air filter box out of here. So in order to remove this connection, just you got to pinch this connector, right? So take your pointer finger, go from the bottom, thumb at the top, pinch this black band and wiggle this from side to side. It will pop out. We also need to disconnect the electrical connection to the mass airflow sensor. To disconnect the electrical connection for the mass airflow sensor, simply pull up on this red tab. Oh, don't pull it out, but pull it out a little bit. And push down on this black tab. Wiggle the connector. It should come off. On the back side of this air filter box, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter fasteners that we need to remove. Now's a good time to use that magnetic 10 millimeter socket. Now with those two 10 millimeter fasteners removed from the rear, there's just a little rubber plug down towards the front of this air filter 
loop box, so you should be able to lift it up, wiggle it towards the windshield a little bit, and it should pop right out, so we'll go ahead and remove that. Now is the proper time to blow off the top of the valve cover, so take some compressed air and get all the schmutz out of here. So I have the camera sitting on top of the valve cover. Now we're gonna have to start removing all of these electrical connections, so these, I believe, are the cam shaft actuator solenoids. This is for the intake, this is for the exhaust. Now I did label these just to be sure that I put these back right. Put a piece of duct tape, F for front, R for rear, and I also put F uh, for front on the valve cover and R for rear. So I always struggle with the removal of these electrical connections on the solenoids. What I tried to do this time, I tried to lift up on this white tab and push down on this black tab right here. But uh, as you can see, if I try to do that, the uh, connector is still fighting me. So what I like to do, I just take a 90 degree pick, come from the underside of the connector, and pry up on this little tab right here, and they come off uh, very easy that way. So that's my technique. I am going to remove these um, just in case there's anything on the screens of these, so we'll ensure that we clean these as well. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do now is just continue removing the electrical connections for these uh, coil packs here. There is this uh, little body clip tab for this wiring harness that's kind of plugged into the valve cover, so I'm going to take body clip removal tool and just pop this out. That way we can hopefully separate this from the, uh, the valve cover. Yeah, that's like a Christmas tree clip that just kind of popped out. And also what I'm going to do to try and lift this up away from everything a bit is I'm actually going to use whatever this tie thing's called. I'll wrap this around the harness. I'm actually just going to use these tabs right here and I'm just going to wrap this around so that helps create a little bit of separation between the harness and the valve cover. Looks like we have a reasonable clearance now on the back side. Let's carry on by removing these four ignition coils and we can do that with a 10 millimeter socket. Now let's also remove these two solenoids, 10 mil. So this line right in front of the throttle body is going to be in our way. So in order to remove this, you have to somehow get a finger underneath this little white clip, push towards the valve cover, and a little wiggle it should come right off. Be very careful, don't want to break anything. Change of plan, I have a uh, little clamp on the windshield wiper and another one of these uh, wire ties holding it up out of the way. And I believe the final thing that we need to remove on the top of the valve cover is just this clip for, I believe this is the low pressure fuel line. We'll see if we could remove this without breaking anything. Now let us drain the engine oil, 15 millimeter socket. Now let's remove this valve cover and we're going to do that by removing the 10 millimeter bolts all around the top of the valve cover. All right, let's gently pry up on this valve cover and see if we could get it to break free. Pull this valve cover off. Broke the gasket. Oh well. 
So my suspicions are confirmed. The timing chain is extremely loose. If I take a look at the top of the valve cover, first, I mean, just look at the carbon buildup on this valve cover. This is just excessive. That chain may have been hitting the top of the valve cover there. That's why some of the carbon's peeling away, but it's not severe. Like I, don't, I don't really see any wear marks or anything. I, I think it was just starting to tap the top of that valve cover. So I, I think we're going to be okay here. This is where the valve cover gasket broke. I'm probably going to be a cheap ass and just try and super glue this back together. Maybe put a dab of RTV there when I go to uh, reassemble this. But yeah, we're heading down the right track here. Now because we're going to have to manually rotate the engine, let's go ahead and remove all four spark plugs. 20 minutes ago I ended up spraying some PB blaster down each one of these spark plug holes because I started to crack this first one and it was fighting me a bit. I wouldn't be surprised if these spark plugs have never been changed in this car and this car has about 140,000 miles on it so oh, that makes me nervous. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you left that PB blaster sitting there a little bit longer. Alright, so I skipped number two, starting on number three. Phew, these spark plugs are ugly. So taking a quick look at this timing chain, it is very loose. So there's some type of failure, whether the chain is stretched or we have a broken guide. Not 100% sure yet. But what we need to do next is remove the uh, timing chain cover, which is underneath this engine mount. Now I'm going to try and accomplish this job without removing this engine mount, but that just means that I'm probably not going to get the best camera angle. So we'll give it a go because I think this is what most of us are going to attempt. So what I need to do now is go down and start removing the timing chain cover. All right, so now we need to remove the belt. So right above the crankshaft pulley, you'll see the belt tensioner up there, and I have my 3 8 inch ratchet inserted into the belt tensioner. And what you gotta do is just pull the tension off the belt, and slip the belt off, let that tensioner come back down. Thank you. All right, so what I need to do now is remove the belt tensioner, and I can do that by taking a 15 millimeter socket. There's a little hole through the frame right here. Just take your impact, put it through, and you should be able to loosen up this 15 mil that holds the belt tensioner in place. You're ready to catch it. Now we need to remove our crankshaft pulley and the socket size is 13 sixteenths. Now that we have that crankshaft pulley removed and the belt tensioner removed, the other thing I did off camera, there's a little electrical cord that was clipped on the side of the cover over here. I popped that off. So now we are ready to start removing this cover and that's going to consist of removing all these 10 millimeter fasteners. This is going to be really hard to film. So what I think I'm going to do, I'll set up the camera, record it anyway, but after I finish taking the cover off, I'll review how many fasteners there are on here. So I removed 10 fasteners and I reinstalled one on the bottom here so when I go to crack this cover, uh, the cover doesn't drop on my head or anything like that. So I noticed that there's a little tab right here that looks like you can take a pry bar and pry against it. So in addition to all those 10s, there's actually a 
13 right here as well that I missed. Alright, let's try this again. Alright, so whether you like it or not, you are going to have to remove that passenger side engine mount off the engine. Now I have the bottom of the engine supported with a couple blocks of wood on the oil pan. I know this isn't ideal, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So now let's go to the top side of the engine and let's start removing this engine mount. Let's try prying this cover off from the top a little bit now. That's a good sign. I do that one holding bolt on the uh, the bottom of the cover. Well, I'm pretty sure she's loose. All right, let's go back to the bottom and try and take this cover off the rest of the way. All right, now it's time to get down to business. So I want to show you what was causing the noise or rattle in this car. So I don't know if you can see it. Well, first off, this is the timing chain. This is the timing chain here. And this chain is the balance shaft chain. So the balance shaft chain, very loose, and it was making contact with the case right here. Uh, you're not really going to be able to see that, but there's a little shiny spot on the aluminum right here. So that's no good. So we need to replace this chain the guides and the tensioner, as well as same thing for the actual timing chain. Now, the first thing that we need to do in order to remove this chain is we need to remove the timing chain. In order to remove the timing chain, we need to find top dead center of cylinder number one. So here's what I did. I reinstalled the crankshaft bolt. This is a 21 millimeter bolt. I rotated the engine uh, clockwise until one, there's a keyway on this shaft. I wanted to ensure that that keyway was in the 12 o'clock or vertical position. Also taking a look at the timing chain. See how that orange mark is on the bottom? I think this actually should be over left one. Let's see what I mean in a moment here, but let's go to the top side of the engine. Continuing on with ensuring that we're on top dead center of cylinder number one, if we take a look at the intake camshaft sprocket, the timing mark, you see this uh, triangle right here, this is the timing mark, so this should be at about the two o'clock position, and the timing mark on the exhaust cam sprocket should be at about the 10 o'clock mark. And if we take a look at the chain, see the green link on the chain, this is actually to the right one of where it should be. So to me, and it's the same thing over here, so it looks like this chain probably skipped one tooth all the way around, or maybe they just installed it that way, not 100% sure, but uh, we will be fixing that. But now we know that cylinder number one is on top dead center. Next, we need to remove the upper timing chain guide, and that can be accomplished by removing these two 10 millimeter bolts. Next, we need to remove the lower bolt for the front timing chain guide. So we just removed the 10 millimeter bolt from this front guide, the lower 10 millimeter. In order to remove the upper 10 millimeter for that guide, you need to remove this plug, and you're gonna need a pretty large Allen wrench to do so. Not 100% sure what the size is, but this is, was on here pretty tight, so it's going to take a little bit of force to get that off. And now we can take our socket wrench and get our 10 millimeter in there. So in order to remove this upper 10 millimeter, you're definitely going to want to have a magnetic 10 millimeter socket. So down on the left side of the engine, you're going to need to take a 32 millimeter socket and hook it onto the tensioner. And we're going to try and crack this loose now. Oh, I'm going to need a bar.
think we just broke it loose. There is our tensioner. Okay. Now you can remove your front timing chain guide. If it hasn't fallen out already, just pull it right out. Now we can remove the timing chain tensioner guide. So correction, this timing chain tensioner guide is actually gonna stay in place until we remove the exhaust and intake cam sprockets. So let's go back to the top side of the engine. So what we need to do now is remove these sprockets on the intake and exhaust camshaft. Now, truthfully, I think this is a 24 mil. Like there's a little spot to, uh, to lock a wrench onto the camshaft so it doesn't spin. I don't have a 24, so I'm gonna utilize a 15 16 and that seems to be a decent fit. And I believe this is 18 mil. So we'll hold these against one another and crack this loose. Oh. What is what? Yeah. Now that these bolts are removed, let's go ahead and remove the exhaust camshaft sprocket. Now let's remove the intake sprocket. Now we can lower down the timing chain. We can continue to remove the uh, timing chain. Get this out of here. Now we can also remove the timing chain tensioner guide. You gotta pull this out from the top. Now we can remove our timing chain sprocket off the crankshaft. All right, now we have access to the balance chain. So what we need to do now is remove the tensioner. We need to remove all three guides and then we'll work on getting this chain lined up. Now with all these guides off, we can go ahead and remove the chain. All right, now we can start reinstalling the chain and we'll kind of go over timing marks in a minute here once I get everything kind of lined up. All right, trying to give you the best shot I can here, but I have the balance chain in place and everything's timed properly. So I'd recommend you start with this gear up here, which I believe is the intake balancer. Now that's normally gonna have the yellow mark on the chain. Well, for this one, I think there's a yellow, black, and yellow. So the black is gonna line up on the timing mark. Start up there, and I go to this one. I don't know if you can see, but there's a little arrow on the gear right there. So we're gonna line that up with the black mark on the chain. And then as for the crankshaft, Here's your time and mark right here, and as you can see, we have the black mark lined up right there. And up on the left, all the way up here, this is the water pump. It's not timed, so that's of no importance. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna carefully install the guides, ensuring that these timing marks stay in place. After I get the guides in here, we'll torque those down to 89 inch-pounds. We'll check it one more time. Then we will install the tensioner and release the tensioner once we ensure that everything is still uh, lined up and timed properly. So I've re-verified that all my timing marks are correct, so that black line in between the two yellows on the little arrow on the uh, intake balancer, black mark is lined up with the arrow on the exhaust balancer, and then the final black mark is lined up on the crankshaft. All the bolts for these tensioner brackets 
I have snugged down a little bit. Uh, maybe put like five to ten inch pounds of uh, torque on there. Another thing you want to do is verify that the chain is within the guides, which, looking again, the chain is in the channel of all the guides. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this release pin, which will put tension onto this tensioner guide, like so. We'll pull this pin and discard this pin. Now what I'm going to do is take my little inch-pound torque wrench with a 10 millimeter socket, set it to 89 inch-pounds, and we are going to torque down all the bolts for all of the guides. Now that we're finished with that lower chain, we can go ahead and start working on our timing chain. So what we need to do first is fish our timing chain down through the center of the engine. Pay attention to the yellow, black, and yellow mark. That is going to be for the intake cam sprocket. Next, we'll carefully feed our new chain tensioner guide from the top side of the engine down. Once you fish that guide down into the engine, you can install the 10 millimeter fastener and we'll get that hand tight for now. Now we can install the intake camshaft sprocket. Now if you take a look, there's a little guide right here, a little cutout. Well, if you look at the back side of the sprocket, you'll see that there's a little tab. So when you go to reinstall this, just ensure that this tab lines up with that cutout right there. We'll go ahead and start the bolt. Take a look at the sprocket, you're gonna see a little triangle. That triangle is where the black chain link is gonna be lined up with. See yellow, black, yellow. Again, that triangle is lined up. Now let's install the exhaust camshaft sprocket. And again, same thing, there's gonna be a tab on the back, so we're gonna make sure that that lines up. So just like on the intake side, we're going to look for the black chain link and we're going to ensure that that lines up with the triangular timing mark. So what you may need to do is take your uh, box wrench and rotate this shaft until you can get the chain lined up on that mark, which I can see right now it is properly lined up on the mark. Back this off slightly. So again, kind of hard to see, but on the exhaust side, you can see that triangular mark that's lining up with our black link. On the intake side, we have our triangular link lining up with the black link, again, in between the two yellow marks. All right, now it's time to reinstall the crankshaft timing chain sprocket. Now, here's a little secret. On this sprocket, there's actually a little piece of thin metal on the outside, I guess, to help protect it from the, uh, the crankshaft bolt. So if you remove this thin piece of metal, you're going to notice that there's a timing mark right here, a little circle, so that's going to be our timing mark. And also, really important, you see that there's a keyway on the top? Well, there's a keyway at the top of this crankshaft uh, that you can't see. So first thing we'll do, we'll slide this in, ensure that the gear lines up with the crankshaft uh, keyway. I'm not going to lie, it's going to take you a couple tries to get this timing chain on here properly. What I found is it helped me to take this bolt off and then have some slack in this tensioner guide. And then I was able to finally work the chain into position. As you can see, that's our timing mark right there. A little dot right there. This bolt actually has to come out. But we're properly timed on the crankshaft and we'll go to the top side of the engine and just double check that we're timed properly. Might be kind of difficult to see on camera, but on the exhaust side, see the black mark? lined up with our triangle on our exhaust sprocket. And let's take a look at the intake side. We are lined up properly, so now we can go ahead and install the forward guard guide. Now that we've confirmed that our timing chain marks are in the proper orientation, what we can do now is go ahead and install the forward chain guide.
The upper fastener for this forward chain guide is through this port that we opened up earlier. So take your 10 millimeter magnetic socket. You're gonna have to play around with this. This forward timing chain guide is in place. The fasteners are hand tight. We'll torque these down in a little while here. But what we need to do now is we need to install this new tensioner. All right, so now we need to install the new chain tensioner. But take a look at the new chain tensioner. Just like the old one, it has a little cup here. Here is the chain tensioner guide. And this is where the chain tensioner makes contact with the tensioner guide. Now you see how it's kind of like a C? Well, that wants to be received into there like so. You don't want it like that. You want it cradled, right? Cradled. I think cradled is the, uh, the proper term we're looking for here. So it's going to be impossible for me to show this to you, but imagine the chain guard sits in the engine like so. What you're going to want to do, you're going to want to slide this in from the back side of the engine, and then it should make contact. So once it makes contact, then you can start threading this in. And what's supposed to happen is this actually is independent from the nut in the back. See how that spins? So we shouldn't have any problem. I just wanted to try and explain this onto the table before I uh, put this in the car. So we'll put this in the engine now. Again, we'll take the chain tensioner like so. We'll insert it from the back side of the block. Right. Yeah, it's going to be a little tricky, but try and get your torque wrench on the back side of that tensioner. Put 55 foot pounds on it. That's 55 foot pounds right there, so that is properly torqued. Now we need to torque down all the fasteners for the timing chain guide. So take your inch pound torque wrench, set it to 89 inch pounds, and just torque everything down. And also, just double check your timing marks. Make sure everything's timed properly. This is uh, the last chance you're gonna have to check everything. That's good. Okay, good. Now take a rubber or plastic tipped tool handle and what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna go down in between these two sprockets rested on the chain where that tensioner sits. What you're gonna to wanna to do is give this a light tap and it should activate the tensioner. And that just activated. Everything's nice and tight. Looking good. Now we can install the upper timing chain guide. And again, we'll torque these two 10 mils to 89 inch pounds. All right, so we're back down at the crankshaft, so the bolt's still installed. What I'm gonna do now is rotate the crankshaft at least two complete rotations. I'll probably do more, but what we're doing now is if everything's timed properly, there shouldn't be any interference between components. So if you start rotating this and you feel like there's some strong resistance or you're hitting something, that indicates that something's not timed properly and you should stop and look at your timing marks, make sure everything's timed properly. Because if you don't correct this now, when you go to start the engine, you're gonna bend valves and it's just gonna be a complete nightmare. So rotate this a few times, make sure you have no interference. You done? Well, not, not the complete moment of truth, but. Uh So now that we've confirmed that there's no interference and everything's turning properly, what we're going to do is we're going to torque down these camshaft sprockets to 22 foot-pounds, and then we're going to add another 100 degrees of rotational torque.
So I have these two bolts torqued down properly. Now what I need to do is reinstall this plug. As you can see, I've added some Teflon tape. So I've cleaned up this timing chain cover off camera. I sprayed it with some brake parts cleaner and just scrubbed off as much as I could. So we have the new gaskets. So this gasket actually lines up on the face of the engine. There's actually an alignment tab here and an alignment tab down there. So the gasket's on the engine. I have the timing cover in my hand. It's all cleaned up. So let's go ahead and try and reinstall this. You know, I'm gonna go one way or the other. You see those alignment tabs? Mom. You got it. Feels pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start all these fasteners by hand. All right. Now that we have all the bolts installed in this timing chain cover, we need to torque all the bolts down and according to my research, these should be torqued down to 216 inch pounds. All right, spent about a week working on this car. Just got everything back together. Wow. First time starting it up. Let's see how we did. Quite nervous. Like this is either gonna go really well or it's gonna go really bad, but I'm pretty sure I followed all the instructions. Just put another quarter or two of oil in the engine. Definitely lost more oil than a conventional oil change. Let's start it up again. That started with much better. I gotta tell you, it is so much quieter. I know it doesn't sound like it. But All right, so we're going on our first test drive. We're probably going up maybe an 8% grade, 2,000 RPM. It's a little bit nerve-wracking. Gotta tell you, it's 
knock on wood, it's running like a top right now. Give her a little go-go juice, 2,500 ripples, 3,000. Very smooth. Very smooth. It sounds like we're probably going to have to do wheel bearings in the car again at some point, but... The car just feels like it's running so much better. Starting at 10 miles an hour, going to give it half throttle, 4,000 rip pumps, four and a half. The engine just sounds healthy. No codes. When we get back to the house, we'll have to make sure there's no oil leaks, but knock on wood, so far so good. Idling very smooth at 900. We're parked right now. I don't want to push it too hard too quick. But it really sounds like a new engine compared to the rickety old thing it sounded like before we did the chains. Car is absolutely running like a top right now. I don't see any oil leaks, nothing dripping. Everything looks good. I'd like to give a special shout out to this little lady right here, the fiance. She's been very patient with me over the past week of working on this car. But I think we got this repair knocked out for around $300. And I bet you a dealership probably, what do you think they would have charged? A lot more. Yeah, At probably, least double. Th th I mean, honestly, this is probably like a two grand repair, something like that. So doing this ourselves for $300, I think we did all right. Now, what would you like to say to the viewers in closing? Thanks for watching and make sure you click the links down below to get any of the tools that you need to do this on your own. Yes, all the parts I used on this project will be listed in the description down below. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. We'll catch you on the next one. We'll catch you on the next one. Close enough. <laughs>